the Association of Convenience Stores have revealed that basically 1,200 incidents of theft will occur every hour in British stores. The fact that people are not surprised by that, as one of my first guests pointed out, um, it just tells you how shocking it has become. Let's have a look at this in more detail. What does this mean? I've got two guests ready to join me at the moment I'm fr uh, to discuss this. First of all, Neil Mackay. He's Managing Director of Mackay's of Cambridge, which I'm pretty sure I used to walk past quite regularly many years ago when I was there. And I'm also pleased to welcome David McKelvey. He's CEO of TMI, which is a private company that investigates shop theft and a former detective chief inspector in the Met Police. Um, Neil, first of all, thank you very much for joining us. Now, is that Mackay's um, on Absolutely. near the New Market Road? Where has, was That's it near? Correct, yeah. yeah, we've been here since 1912. Yes, you have indeed, and I was there in 1978, 79 and 80. So now I know exactly what we are talking about. It, a long established business in Cambridge. Uh, hardware, essentially, I seem to remember in my day. It's probably all changed. Can you tell me, um, you've, been, you've been really concerned about growing shop theft for the last 15 years, I think it is, but you're actually at the point now where you're thinking essentially of what items you keep in the store. Uh, how bad is it? Let us understand the challenge you're facing. Well, it's bad for us and it's bad for a lot of people all around the country. Um, you know, as the Association of Convenience Stores have pointed out, um, you know, there's a, a, a very large number of people. There's a growing number of people, uh, you know, self-checkouts and things like that, which make it so much more well, simpler for, for people to, to uh, thieve, in fact. But we have pretty much come to the end of our tether, and we are just going to put up a mugshot of our, uh, our thieves where we've got absolute proof and we have of the latest incident absolute proof what, what, where three people happened? came into our store do tell us Sorry? what's happened do tell us what's happened you've just had well, an incident in the last few days armed with cable they came in armed with cable cutters um and we have all our power tools secured on the display stand with chain and and, and cables so for the general public it's simple enough they can touch and feel the products but these came in came in and cable cutted the entire stock off. They went out with six power tools worth about 1,500 pounds. Now that takes a huge amount of money uh, of, of sale, additional sales to even get back to where we started before they stole the products. Uh, we've got clear CCTV. In fact, they knew they were being filmed. Um, they looked straight at the cameras. No fear, of, no fear of follow-up, no fear of accountability. They couldn't care. What they couldn't care less. Neil, what I time... Mean, we, of, we've been Neil, for, sorry. For a long time. Can I just ask you, what time of day was this or night, was it? It was at 9.43am. Uh, so in the business day, they were... Because you're a big store, day. aren't you? You're actually quite a big store, yeah. I, I remember. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah, we are indeed. We, we, I mean, we've developed uh, over, uh, you know, over over a hundred years in all sorts of different markets. Okay. But, uh, the, yeah. Well, th thank you for that. Let me bring in uh, David McKelvey, as I say, CEO of TMI. Um, that's a private investigation company into shop theft. Uh, also a former detective chief inspector in the Met Police. David, uh, look, this this is probably not new to you to hear a story like this, although that's very high value shop theft. I mean. Tell me, are, is there anything else that we can do, be it the, armed for, uh, the, the police forces or the shop owners themselves, or have we got to a point now there is such brazen theft, the willingness uh, to do it, the lack of fear of accountability, that it doesn't really matter what shopkeepers do now? Uh, we've got to an appalling state of affairs, but yes, it's easily solvable. Um, as we've proven across every single beat we police. Neil, for instance, if you contact me afterwards, uh, we'll look at that and we will, if we can identify those individuals, we will prosecute them, we will put them for the courts, and if they're known, there's a good chance that they'll go to prison. So it's, it's about bringing these people to justice. It's about putting it before the courts. It's the only thing that works. 
It's about catching them and convicting them. But will the police uh, prosecute them? Sorry to cut you off, David, but will the police prosecute? We're only reading this week that burglars and shoplifters are going to be amongst early released criminals because the jails are too full. So what chance has Neil of seeing these people prosecuted? The, the, the reality is the police are massively under-resourced. Uh, and we see day in, day out, we see the police either not turning up, turning up very late, or when they do turn up, they, they tend to let them go with the community resolution notice. In the areas that we police, we bring private criminal prosecutions. The retailers can bring their own prosecutions. That's what we do. Massively successful. It puts these people before the courts, it convicts them. You don't need to rely on the police to bring a, pro a prosecution. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of the retailers need to, to wake up to that reality. We do see some of the larger retailers have got these non-intervention policies whereby they won't support mm. prosecutions, whether it's a private prosecution or a police-led prosecution. Um, and, again, they need to wake up to the reality because, as you've seen, shoplifting's going through the roof, but more worryingly... Uh, assaults and violence towards staff has grown doubled year on year. 2021, 427. 2022, 857. This year, 1,300 incidents a day of violence towards shop staff. It's their own staff are suffering because they have these non-intervention policies and that coupled with the fact that the police cannot respond or often have the resources to respond it's a perfect storm. Uh, Neil, retailers have to wake up. There's more they can do. Would you consider uh, private prosecution? Well, I've prosecuted all of these people. I've got a whole rogues gallery of people I've prosecuted. That's what you've got behind you, is it? Sorry? That's yeah, what that you've got behind, behind you. We have, you know, that's only part of it. The rest of it by our back door. The thing is, though, I mean, the police only today in Cambridge published on their website uh, photographs of a burglar breaking into an office in Cambridge and I have provided them with the CCTV footage of our thieves but they regard shop theft as a lower type of category, yeah. category uh, theft. Can I, I have persuaded them. Uh, ho hold on Neil, um, come in David. Yeah. We're going to win, they are going to upgrade the, 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 it to a burglary because they did actually venture into an area that is okay. not normally okay uh, it's David, open to the public. David would you like to I'm sorry there's a bit of a delay on the line for, for our viewers and listeners but David do you want to come are you wanted to come in there yeah apologies um I mean we basically I don't I can't remember the last time we prosecuted a, a theft shoplifting we prosecute burglary because all of these people that we uh, that we deal with we catch them a bit they are all prolific shoplifters they've all had trespass notices served on them they are trespassers when they enter a shop they commit an offence, so we prosecute burglary. The advantage of that is that it gives the courts bigger sentencing powers. So effectively, instead of starting off with a, uh, a fine, you, you're starting off with a potential of a prison sentence. So the police don't tend to prosecute burglary, but it is an offence of burglary if they have trespassed when they steal. And that's what you need to do. You need to get away from this idea that it's just simple theft. It's burglary. These people are organised criminal gangs and they should be prosecuted for burglary. Now, David, whilst I've got to you, I also want to ask you about what's been reported in Liverpool that's taking place. Um, now, they are... To and, and, Neil, you might be interested in hearing about this. They're saying local policing teams um, are recommending to shop shopkeepers that they actually introduce effectively a, a, a DNA scan uh, a spray, rather, where you actually spray these people, if they're particularly maybe if they're on the way out or or however it goes. And this DNA spray lasts for about two weeks, is my understanding of it, and it will help capture people. Have you heard? Is this is this sort of not help capture people, help identify people? Is this rubbish, or is there some good some good sense in this? Do you think? Well, if, if from my point of view. Uh... We, we've got to uh, actually catch them at the time. Uh, most of the people we've prosecuted have been caught after the event. So, so spray, we, we're not going to spray all our customers. So uh, how do you, you know, these guys are so brazen, they couldn't care less. Uh, and I don't think, as, as has been pointed out by uh, your other guests, I don't David, think yeah. that the police have got the uh, have got the ability or the resources to actually handle it. 
So we're in an epidemic sort of situation, and we uh, we got to. I, I've I, gloves are off. I used to put lines over their faces. No longer. All right, David. Just on the spray point, uh, it, it's it's called a selector DNA intruder spray kit. So I'm not sure how selective it's going to be. You, uh, but what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, they, you know, the, we keep hearing all of these various gimmicks coming up. It's, it, it would work clearly if you catch the people. But most stores now, the vast majority of stores and most shopping areas, have got CCTV. You know, as Neil says, they are blatant. Their faces are on display. If you want to catch and convict these people, you've got their images anyway. You don't need to spray them with any spray because they're on CCTV, literally in front of shop staff, in front of security staff, filling their bags up. So it's, you know, selective DNA, yeah, it's, a, it's an added tactic, but the reality is, the evidence is already there. You just need to use it. You need to prosecute it. OK, people. Neil, um, you see... In, in, in you... California, Neil, can I just say... Yes, go in ahead. In California, we've got to a, such a state that businesses are closing. Yeah. They've introduced uh, a new state bill over there, which has now made it almost um, a, the case that the shop staff don't even approach shop thieves. In fact, people are being sacked for doing so over there. So we don't want that to get to that stage over here, but we've got to do something. We've got to. I was down in the House of Commons myself back in November talking to a load of lords and MPs and top brass police. OK, let me st stop I there for a second, Neil, because I, I can sense you are really almost at the end of your tether. You're very frustrated by this. I don't blame you. I ran a business for years. It wasn't retail, but I, I would be tearing my hair out. But when you met with our lawmakers... Did you come away with any sense of confidence they were getting this grasp, the scale of what is going on? They are beginning to. Uh, I mean, people like Ian Paisley, uh, MP, the son of the firebrand, was there. And we all signed a pledge there during that meeting where, where they were going to pledge to support retailers as much as possible. Mm, but, okay. uh, but in reality, it's down to local police and they are restricted. I, I, I speak regularly to the local police commissioner, uh, Daryl Preston. Well, let, let me, he, you know, let, let me he, draw, if I may, your, your local police and crime commissioner, I totally understand his responsibilities on, on that. Uh, David, last word to you on this. What is the solution? Is it get all about prosecution and, and making people understand they'll be held to account? Or is it something else? No, it, it is prosecuting those prolific shoplifters. The other thing we do is we will always serve a, a trespass notice on every individual that's caught. It's about catching them. If you catch them, you you can then... Sorry, you're shaking your head. <laughs> no, don't worry about that. No, look, gentlemen, thank you very much indeed. Very no passionate views. I think you're all in common common cause there. Uh, Neil, uh, I'm so with you. I, I imagine anyone listening to this must be absolutely um, outraged that a business that has been going since 1912, that you're forced to put up posters in modern Britain highlighting people who are feeling there is no level of accountability anymore, can walk into your store with a pair of cable clippers and walk out with power tools, but some very expensive product, and rob you blind without any sense of accountability. That was Neil Mackay, Managing Director of Mackay's of Cambridge, large hardware um, a company there. And David McKelvey, uh, who is the CEO of TMI, private company that investigates shop theft, and of course a former detective chief inspector.